To print in Revit, you need to find the print dialog box underneath the applications menu. Now the applications menu is the big R that you see in the upper left hand corner of the screen. And then down toward the bottom of the screen there will be print. If you select on the word print, it will take you to the print and dialog box. Or you can click on the word print here on the menu that pops up on the side of the screen. From there, the print dialog box will show up and it will give you the name of your default printer first. From here, you can pick on any of the printers that you have installed, including any PDF printers you might have installed on your computer. Once you have the right printer, come over here to where it has properties. And if you select on properties, you'll see a listing of all the properties associated with that printer. Now, these are Windows properties. They're printer properties. They're not actually Revit properties, which is why I'm not selecting on the properties button myself. Everyone's printer driver properties are going to look a little bit different depending on the make and model and manufacturer of that printer. But one thing that will be constant somewhere in those properties will be the size of the sheets that you can print to. So a little bit later on, we're going to be looking at the different size sheets that we can print to. And the Windows printer properties, where this button is at, somewhere in there, depending on what your printer is, it'll say that it can print to this size sheet, maybe 11 by 17 or an 18 by 24 or a 30 by 42 and it'll take its information from that list. Now if you want to print to a file, such as a PDF file, you can do that by putting a little check mark right here where it says print to file. And when you do, if you have the right settings going on up to that point, you'll have a couple of different options available here underneath file. The first one is going to be combine multiple selected views and sheets into a single file. What this means is that you can print yourself a multi-sheet or multi-page PDF file. Also, you can create separate files. What this means is that if you have multiple sheets selected, it will print multiple PDFs, each with its own file with its own unique name. And this is where you can specify what that name should be, and you can browse to the appropriate location for that. Now in this case, I do want to print to a printer, so I'm just going to clear out the checkbox there for print to file. The next option is called print range, and currently it says current window. Now current window means it'll print everything inside of the current window. Stay right here in this dialog box. Don't click on close like what I'm about to do. I want to show you what the difference is though between current and visible. If I minimize this or actually restore down this view, you can start to see that this floor plane is now getting cut off. If I pull this up a little bit more, it's getting cut off even a little bit more. Well, what is happening here inside of the print dialog box is that if we choose current window, it'll print everything, including the part that's getting cut off in this view. The next option is visible portion of current window. If it's visible portion as opposed to just current window, it'll only print what's visible in the view. So it won't print the entire window. It'll just print this spot that we can see right now. Next, there's an option here that says Selected Views and Sheets. If you pick on Selected Views and Sheets, there's a button that becomes available and it's called Select. Upon clicking on Select, you can now select which views that you want to be able to print, such as a drafting view, maybe a floor plan view, or a section view. And by putting a check mark next to those, it'll only print those that have the check mark. If you have it the way that you like it, maybe you'll want to save this so that in future sessions, you can come back and print the same set again. To do that, you can just move up here to where it says Save As, click on that, and then give it a name that you'll recognize. In this case, I kind of like Set 1, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And click on OK. We can now see that it says Set 1 here. So in the future, if we want to print these again, we can just click on Select, come up here, pick Set 1, and it'll print those that have a check mark again. From here, I'm going to click on OK. We can see it now says that it's going to print set one. It gives you the number of copies, whether or not you want to reverse the order that they print. But there's also an option here that's for settings. And this is probably the most important area, frankly, inside of this program. Here, if you select on Setup, there's an option down toward the bottom left-hand side called Zoom. As I was doing support on many different Revit issues, I would say that printing to the wrong scale or not getting the print to look exactly right is probably the number one thing that I ran into for beginners. 
What usually happens is that they don't change fit the page. If it's at fit the page, it will not print to scale. You might get lucky and print the scale, but most likely it'll be a few percent off. If you wanted to print the scale, choose zoom and make 100% as being the size that you want to use. Paper placement, either center or offset from corner, kind of depends on your printing. My own rule of thumb is I usually do offset from corner and then tell it how far off the edge of the piece of paper that I want to print. And it's not uncommon for me to do zoom 100% and offset sort of in combination with one another. But if I just want something that's going to be on the piece of paper and it fits, then I'll usually do center and fit the page together. A couple of minutes ago, I mentioned the paper size and how underneath properties, that's where you're going to find those paper sizes based on settings of your plotter drivers. Here you have size, and these are those different sizes that have been made available from that driver. And you can pick whatever size you want to print to off of the list. There's a vector versus raster processing. Uh, try vector first, usually that'll work. If stuff starts vanishing off of your sheet, such as certain letters disappear or line work starts to disappear, try raster processing instead. It might print better. Quality, I usually leave on high. Colors, there's three different options. You either print in color, black lines, or grayscale. Black lines and grayscale print very similarly, and depending on your plotter, one might work a little bit better than the other. I usually try black lines first. If it looks good, I go with it. If it doesn't, then try grayscale. If that looks better, then use grayscale. Neither one of them is necessarily right, and I found it usually depends on that plotter and its settings as to which one's going to print the best. Finally, if there's going to be some extra stuff showing up in the plot, such as the crop boundaries, which are the boundaries around the outside of each view, or if you start to print and you realize that all of your elevation symbols or levels are printing off as being blue, there's a very good chance that one of these boxes in here has been checkmarked. So if you start seeing odd things plotting that usually don't plot, you may want to check here underneath options and see if one of those kinds of objects shows up down here. Now I'm going to click on OK to that. All the settings would be in place. All you'd have to do is click on OK and it will print based on the settings that you set up here in the print dialog box.